Sit down. Just who are you? That is none of your business. I'm making it my business, mister. Now, what is your name? It's Horatio. Horatio Montague. Horatio Montague? Thanks for giving yourself away so quickly. What do you mean? Montague is Romeo's last name. Horatio was a character in Hamlet. Well, it's, it's just a coincidence. You're wrong. It fits the pattern set by the outlaws who held up the Wells Fargo office. They use Shakespearean names every time. Your name is Faversham, isn't it? Well, what if it is? That doesn't prove a thing. Not a thing. I'll have to find proof. What are you looking for? Is this the frock coat you wore as Reverend Prospero when you held up Pine Valley? That doesn't prove a thing and you know it. If I stole anything, where is it? You're quite right. I'll need more than a costume as evidence. Well, you won't find anything more. Just what did you do with the money? Ship it back east so it'll be waiting for you when you get there? Go back east and find out. Why don't you give up, mister? You're not going to prove anything on me and there isn't going to be any way you'll be able to. Maybe there is a way, Faversham. What do you mean? You'll find out. Maybe I better read this list back to you just once more. Really, Mr. Hollister, you've read it back to me three times already. I assure you it's correct. I appreciate your thoroughness, but I really must be going. Goodbye. Reckon we gave you mass friend enough time at the hotel? Ah, if there be evidence there, me think he must have been find it by now. something to tell you. The coach is due a few minutes past three. The payroll will be on it. Darling, why are you made up as Otello? Why not, Zortello? Really, do with that voice. Don't you think you're overdoing it a bit? And what's wrong with my voice? It sounds like a foghorn. I know you like to show your versatility, dear, but there's such a thing as going too far. Besides, it's ridiculous to think of holding up the Wells Fargo office disguised as Otello and Desdemona. And what's ridiculous about it? My sweet, it's one thing to be a parson as you were in Pine Valley, or a Civil War veteran as you were in Cloverdale. But Otello, never. But darling, this costume is so roomy. Think of all the money it will hold. <laughs> Stop being silly, my sweet. The money will fit very nicely in the false bottom of the trunk with all the rest. Thanks for telling me where you keep it hidden, Mrs. Faversham. What? But who? The man with the mask. Oh, no. Where's my husband? He's tied up in the bedroom. Oh, I hate you. You spoiled everything. Won't work again. It's no use trying hysterics. But you don't understand. I'm not acting. These are real tears. Oh, where's my handkerchief? I have to tie you up, Mrs. Faversham. This is the end of the road for you and your husband. Not quite, mister. Put your hands up and turn around. It may be the end of the road for you, but not for us. I'm getting worried, Indian. That payroll money is due here any minute now. And your friend should have been back long ago. That's right. Me not like it. Maybe you ought to go to the hotel and see if anything's gone wrong. Ah, me be right back. Kimisabi? Yes, Tano. You all right, Kimisabi? I was tricked by the oldest device in the world. A woman's tears. She had a danger hidden in her handbag. I wonder how long I've been unconscious. Me not know, Kimisabi. It looked like them leave in plenty big hurry. Yes, I took the evidence with them. It was hidden in the bottom of their theatrical trunk. Is Mr. Hollister alone at the Wells Fargo office? That's right, Kimisabi. Me get worried about you. Help me off with this disguise. And make... Mr. Hollister! Mr. Hollister! What happened? They took me by surprise. Not five minutes after the payroll money arrived. They forced me to open the safe. They were in disguises. No. No, none at all. They had a buggy waiting outside with a big trunk in it. I saw it before they knocked me out. Go after them. Find them. I'll be all right. How you doing, Mr. 
Shelly. Ain't never been on such a bumpy road like this before, Hezekiah. Mighty rough on the bustle. Poor little Effie May. She's plumb wore out. Wake up, Effie May. Say something nice to your grandpappy. That's a good girl. Now go back to sleep, you little knucklehead. Oh, no, 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 Matilda. Is that any way to treat our granddaughter, huh? 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 <laughs> <laughs> you look absurd. Isn't this a ridiculous way to be traveling? Oh, but a wonderful way to deceive anyone who follows us. A silly express agent will tell everyone we made our getaway in a buggy. I never dream we'd take time to put on this disguise and switch to a wagon, which is even slower. I hope you're right, but look up there. Well, well, our two old friends. Think they'll stop us? Of course they will. They'll want to know if we've seen a young man and a woman riding along this road in a buggy. Yes, but supposing they recognize us. Oh, darling. They've seen us as we really look, not as we are now, dressed as a couple of country bumpkins with a baby. Besides, we're actors, aren't we? If we can deceive a whole audience, we can surely deceive one masked man and an Indian. But just in case they get a little too inquisitive, my little friend here will be hidden in Effie May's blanket, ready to talk back to them. Look like Farmer's wagon. Let's find out if they've seen anything of two young actors trying to make a getaway in a buggy. Pull up on that wagon. They must be in the hold on it. Now, now, look, mister, if, if you're aiming to rob us, we ain't got nothing or no value. Please don't be alarmed. We mean you no harm. Then why are you wearing that mask? Seems old law-abiding folk ain't safe on these roads no more. Hush up, Effie May. Your grandma won't let them touch you. I can assure you all we want to ask is a few questions. Well, well then go right ahead and ask. We, we ain't run into a soul for days and we plumb relish a little visit. Have you seen a man and a woman go by here recently? They'd be traveling rather fast in a buggy. They had a large trunk with them. Well, now that you mention it, uh, a couple did pass us a while back. They turned off the shortcut to the border. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right, Matilda. And, and come to think of it, they did have a drunk in that buggy they was driving. That sounds like them, Kimis, Happy. Yes, they'd be wise to head for the border as fast as they can. Thanks for the information. Oh, oh Lavinia, you're a genius. <laughs> Not a genius, darling. Just a great actress. Well, <laughs> Why we stop, Kim is happy? Because the man and woman we're looking for aren't headed for the border. What do you mean? They're in that wagon we just left, Tunnel. You sure of that? I've learned disguises long enough to recognize makeup when I see it. Then why we not take them prisoner when we stop them? Because that woman would have shot us if we'd have made a move. She had a gun hidden under that blanket. I had to go along with the act. Then how we take them? I think I know a way. Come on. <laughs> This way. Let's go. for having underestimated you. Pull up on those horses. Anything you say, mister? Get him, Dewey! Get out! Get out!
to acting, Faversham. It may not pay as well, but it's a lot safer profession. Now, on your way. Try any more tricks. Yes, sir. Looks like it's all here, all right. The company's going to be mighty grateful that you got it back for them. Me tell Sheriff what happened, Kim Sabi. I'm on way over now. Good. Mr. Hollister, can we leave our prisoners with you? I'll keep this gun in right out until the sheriff gets here. I feel sorry for you two. You could have used your talents to do a lot of good instead of so much bad. Come on, Tuttle. The world is but a stage, wherein every man must play a part. Mine a sad one. Oh, don't be sad, darling. We may have failed as outlaws, but we're still good actors. Yeah, think of all the great shows you two can do up at the prison for that captive audience. You're so right. You might almost say the masked man has done us a favor. By the way, who is he? He's a man who does lots of favors but only for folks on the right side of the law. He's the Lone Ranger. I am Silver! Away! You will stand with your backs to that wall, senors. You and your faithful servant. You will remain here, senorita. Gentlemen, you will attend her. You can't kill them. Can't I? Just watch me. I will not insult you, Don Pedro, by offering you a blindfold. Have you any last wish? That I have. Will you grant it? I will. Well, then, if it's all the same to you, I should prefer to die from old age. I see that you mock me even to the end. Very well, we will waste no more time. Gentlemen, take your positions. Don Pedro will be your first target. Give us some air. Easy, Toro. Ready. Aim. No, wait. For what, senorita? Do you have orders to kill Don Pedro O'Sullivan? Is that not correct, senor? Quite correct. Then you're executing the wrong man. That is not my father. Daughter, remember the welfare of our people. Hold your tongue. No, senor. I will let you sacrifice much for my father, but not your life. Senorita, I am disappointed in you. Such an old trick to try and stop me. You think I am lying? Well, I will prove to you that I am not. My father, he is famous for his red hair and his red beard. Is that not correct, senor? There is no one in Mexico who would deny that, senorita. Then, look at this. And this, is this truly his? So it's all a trick. But if he's not Don Pedro, then who is he? The answer is obvious, my friend. Did you not say that a masked man and an Indian helped Don Pedro escape this morning? You're right, Ortega. In a short while now, Don Pedro will be safely across the border. He is not there yet. There is still time to stop him. My men ride hard. But he's taken another road, Colonel. How do we know where to find him? I think his daughter will tell us that. We can at least execute these two imposters, unless you choose to save their lives, senorita. Where is your father? Gentlemen, forgive this interruption. Ready. Aim. When I clap my hands together, you will fire. No, wait. I'll tell you where to look. <laughs> Reach, both of Free your hands, Kimasabi. The ropes are too tight. Tunnel, up there. 
we could only get our hands on that sickle. Yeah, but how we do that, Kimo Sabe? When I say go, we'll shake these posts as hard as we can. Ready? Go! <laughs> On your feet, Peon! Carter, tell him. What is going on in there? escape by shaking this building down, I fear it will not work, my friends. Look what we found in the saddlebag on the big white horse Don Pedro is riding. A good fit. Yours, I presume? Well, you will never need these again. You... you have my father? Yes, senorita, safe and sound for the time being. Oh, I almost forgot. Since you were shaking the building so, it must have been for a purpose. It couldn't have been to knock this off the shelf, could it? Take this outside. And this time, keep a closer watch. Ortega, one thing before you go. Yes? Don Pedro puts great store in the silver medallion his daughter's wearing. There's an inscription on it that means a great deal to him. I think he'd like to have it before he dies. Would he indeed? To Don Pedro O'Sullivan for valor and patriotism against the traitor Santoro. So he holds great store by it, does he? That's for Don Pedro's medallion. I have no right to destroy it. I have no right. I have no right. I have every right. In a few minutes, senorita, your father will be standing in front of that courtyard wall, as you were before. When you hear the shots, he will be dead. Senor, why did you deliberately goad him into destroying my father's medallion? I'm sorry, senorita. But we need a sharp-edged tool to cut these ropes. Pure silver is a very soft metal can be easily pounded into a sharp-edged tool. Senor Ortega has given us just what we need. Hurry, keep us heavy. So, this time I have the honor to welcome the real Don Pedro O'Sullivan. Or have I? What's the meaning of yanking on my beard? Just to make sure it is your beard, senor. Well, uh, now are you satisfied? Quite satisfied, Don Pedro. Take him out of the wall. Want me to put a bullet in him? No, no. I like his spirit. And besides, good servants are difficult to find. Tie him up. Pedro, are you ready to die? Let's go. I must ask your indulgence, Don Pedro, for giving you such a poor farewell. The great Don Pedro Miguel Hernandez Santiago O'Sullivan deserves a more distinguished firing squad. But we do the best we can. Get on with it, man. Ah, but wait. Jose, pronto. We need you and your rifle. Over there with the rest of them. And now, farewell, Don Pedro. 
the first shot. After that, if you want a little target practice. One, two, Don Pedro would like to see you. Good luck, Don Pedro. You should be well across the border by nightfall. Uh, this time, there'll be no one to stop you. Thank you, my friends, for me and for my countrymen. Gracias, senores. Adios, senorita. Now, that's what I call a man. Now, would you be saying perhaps there's a bit of the Irish in him, Papa? <laughs> oh, devil take you. There's a bit of the Irish in all of us. But in him, there's a bit of every man. And a bit of him belongs to every man. That's why his name means so much to every man. The Lone Ranger. Kyle Silver, away! Stop. Just like he went right straight up in the air. He ain't got no wings yet. He pulled an old Indian trick. All we gotta do is quarter around in a circle. You go that way and I'll go this way. We'll cross his path. Now, uh, according to Groat's map, he hid the gold in a pool of quicksand right over that ridge there. That same quicksand pool we passed this morning? Yes. 
Are you sure it was Black Hawk who was shooting at you? Me sure, Kimasabi. And man with him was in cell when Groot handed me map. We better get after that gold. Will you be all right if we leave you? No, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Good. Clever, Tonto. If we're going to get to the goal, we've got to cross over that quicksand pool to the island. Uh, anybody fall into pool will die quick. If Groat did it, so can we. Uh, how we do it? I've got an idea, Tonto. Stay there. Come on, big fella. Good boy. Back, 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 Make sure he digs up the gold first. Up for the bad time you give me in Groat in Montana. Bye, mister! Now give me the gold. No, we haven't got time for that now, Black Hawk. We'll do it later. Let's go. I'm leaving. You ain't. No, Black Hawk.
Back. Back, Silver. Back. Back, Silver. Pull. Back. Silver. Back. You all right? I'm going after Blackhawk. Take care of him. Blackhawk. This goal will help Bill Murray White Cloud School after all. But you and your friend won't be around to see it. I'll get going. That's fine, Delvin. Well, I sure wish you men could stay around to see the building finished. I do, too. With Blackhawk and that disbarred lawyer behind bars, I, I guess we owe you more than we could ever pay back. There's our reward, Sheriff, and I only wish Mary Whitecloud could have seen it. She sacrificed her life for her people. And you kept her spark of faith alive with your loyalty and devotion. Well, Tano, it's time we're hitting the trail. Adios. You know, those two men saved my life and saved the school. And I didn't even get that masked man's name. Names ain't important. It's what a man does that counts. And no man's done more for the West than the Lone Ranger. I'll see. 